Moving on from the last video, the next topic is number theory. Number theory is simply the study of integers, which seems easy and even unnecessary. I mean, integers are just 0, 1, 2, negative 10, negative 49, and so on. No decimals or anything like that. But it's far from easy. 90% of what I researched for this video just couldn't be thrown in because it was really advanced. But one big application of this field is cryptography. Whenever you buy something online or input your password into a website, you can thank number theory for helping keep those secure. Most of us learn many basic concepts of number theory starting in elementary school. For example, you know 28 is divisible by 7. And why is that? Because you can multiply 7 by another integer to get 28. You also know that the greatest common factor of let's say 24 and 40 is 8, because 8 is the biggest number that goes into both. But what if you were asked if 24 times 9 plus 40 times 7 is divisible by 8? Well, this is really saying, is there some integer that I can multiply by 8 to get that number? And you should be able to recognize that if you divide both sides by 8, which is the same as dividing each term by 8, you can cancel certain terms, like the 24 and the 8, and the 40 and the 8, leaving integers on top and 1s on the bottom. And this definitely leads to an integer. In our case, it's 62, but we really didn't care about that. We just wanted to find out if this side was divisible by 8, and now we know that it is. Why that worked is because the 24 and 40 were both divisible by 8. It did not matter what these two numbers were. In fact, 24 times any integer plus 40 times any other integer is always divisible by 8, and now you can see why. This is a linear combination of two numbers. In this case, it's 24 and 40. Now here's something you probably don't know yet. What is the smallest positive integer you can get from this? If we set m to negative 1 and n to 1, then do the addition, we get 16. But if we set m to 2 and n to negative 1, we get 8, which is our smallest one now. So 16 won't be our answer. Maybe we set m to 5 and n to negative 3. Then we get 0 out, but we are only looking for the smallest positive integer. Therefore, 0 and negatives don't count. Now the answer to this is actually 8. You won't find anything smaller than that. The smallest positive integer will actually always be the greatest common factor of the two numbers you are doing the linear combination of. Remember that for this next puzzle. Let's say we have an infinite amount of rulers. Half of them measure 7 centimeters and the other half measure 5 centimeters. Yes, I know it's a small length, but just go with it. There are no markings on them and we cannot estimate anything like what one half or a quarter of the length is. We only know that they measure 7 and 5 centimeters respectively. The question is, can we perfectly measure a distance of 2 centimeters? Now this should be pretty easy. You lay down the 7 centimeter ruler, then the 5 on top of that with their ends at the same point. The distance from the beginning of the 7 to the beginning of the 5 would measure 2 centimeters. All we did was take the 7 centimeter ruler, subtract the 5 centimeter one, and we get 2. The next question is, could we measure 3 centimeters perfectly? After a little thought, you should see we can lay down two 5 centimeter rulers and then a 7 on top of that with the ends lined up. The distance from the beginning of the first 5 to the beginning of the 7 would then be 3 centimeters. Again, the formula would be 2 of the 5 centimeter rulers minus 1 of the 7s gives us 3. Now the generic question is, can we measure any integer length? Could we measure 71 centimeters? Or what if instead we had an 87 centimeter ruler and a 39 centimeter ruler? What could we measure then? Well, in our example, we know we can achieve a measure of 3 centimeters by 2 fives minus a 7. That means if we want to achieve 6 centimeters, we can just multiply both sides by 2. If we distribute that 2, we see that 4 of the 5 centimeter rulers minus 2 of the 7 centimeter ones gives us exactly 6 centimeters. And we can use this to get any multiple of 3. Remember I said earlier that the smallest positive integer you can achieve is the greatest common factor of the two numbers, which in our case are the two ruler lengths. The greatest common factor of those is 1. So we can achieve a measure of 1 centimeter or any integer multiple of that, which basically means any positive integer we want. If we wanted to measure 833 centimeters, we could. And that's what the solution to this is. The smallest measure you can make is the greatest common factor of the ruler lengths. 
then you could also make a measure of any positive integer multiple of that. If our ruler lengths are 91 centimeters and 26 centimeters, the greatest common factor is 13. So we can measure 13 centimeters or 26, 39, 52, and any integer multiple of 13, but nothing in between. Yes, this was a simple example of number theory, but I thought it was a good, easy to follow problem. Now, if you want an intro about this application to cryptography, the foundation for securing our information is large prime numbers. It's actually very difficult, even for computers, to factor a really big number into two primes. For example, 13 is prime, and so is 19. Multiply those together and you get 247. If you handed that number to someone, it would not be so easy for them to break it down into its two prime factors. To be fair, this wouldn't take too long, but do it with numbers with hundreds of digits, and even a supercomputer can't do it in a reasonable amount of time. The fastest algorithm we know of is called the general number field sieve, but when you get to several hundred digits, this algorithm becomes unfeasible. So like I talked about in the computer science video, if we wanted to transmit the phrase hello, we could turn that into a prime number, like by turning each letter into whatever number place it is in the alphabet. H is the eighth letter, E is the fifth letter, and so on. Then we just add a small ending to make it prime. Then you and your friend who you want to send this message to could exchange a secret key, which is a really big prime number as well. When you want to transmit hello, you just multiply it by your secret key and send that to your friend. If someone intercepts it, they could not decipher it. If they knew they were looking for two prime numbers that go into this big number, even with a computer, it would take a long time to figure out, at least if the numbers are really big. So they won't know what the message actually says, but your friend would just divide by the secret key and recover the message. But unfortunately, there's a huge flaw with this. If someone intercepts your message, which is your secret key times your actual message, then they intercept another message, which would be your secret key times another actual message, they could easily find your secret key because it would be the greatest common factor of the two numbers they intercepted. And there are ways to determine this very efficiently. Now, while researching this video and the last one, I was going through lectures, textbooks, practice problems, and more to figure out what would be ideal to include. But 90% of what I came across had me saying this would be too difficult to explain, this would take too long, they need more background for this, and so on. So realize this video and the last one don't really do justice for these huge fields in mathematics and computer science. I did talk more about number theory in the computer science video, such as with the Euclid's algorithm and finding the greatest common factor of two big numbers, so I'm not really going to go into much more detail. But I thought these were just some fun examples that really highlight how different math can be, especially at a university level, compared to what you may think. And that's where I'm going to end this video. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and I'll see you all in the next video.